Well, Razorback fans, it is game week, as we all know, but now the game itself has moved times. Didn't expect that to happen, but is the reason the U of A gave good enough for Razorback fans? Let's talk about it on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks Podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 1037 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday. As we are just four days away, Jarius Wright days away from Razorback football getting started up. Uh, I thought about, you know, Jarius Wright, uh, also Cedric Cobbs, and uh, my boy Riddell Krim was not kind of the number fours, but Jarius Wright seems to be the most fitting. But either way, we're getting closer to it. And, you know, yesterday we had a really good podcast, I felt like, of just talking about the game week and uh, the excitement surrounding it. And Sam Pittman got to meet with the media today, and we had a depth chart, which officially got released, that have some things on it that least stood out, which I know we'll talk about and maybe get into some predictions too. But what an announcement I was not expecting to hear or to see was that the game against Western Carolina here in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium changed times, like fully. I, it, it was a weird deal. So basically to kind of give a background into it, I was at the gym this morning and I was about work, about done working out and whatnot, and I on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, I have notifications turned on for Razorback football and basketball and, and baseball, so that way when they tweet out something, it sends me a notification saying they tweeted out something, just because I want to be up to date on the latest news. Well, I get a notification from Razorback football, and all it says, because it doesn't show the full tweet, but it says in the notification, game time change, and I was like, Oh, okay. So maybe they're changing the time of the Kent State game uh, to make, you know, accommodate for TV, or maybe they're going to change the BYU game, something like that. But then I was like, no, wait, it has to be for this week. Oh, so it must have gotten put on TV because before it was just going to be streaming. So the time must be changing because they're actually going to be putting it on actual TV. So I clicked the tweet, it takes me straight to it. And no, that wasn't the case. It had nothing to do with the streaming or TV side or anything like that. They were changing it from 3 p.m. to noon. Now, when I saw that, I'm like, whoa, wait, what? Like, that changes a lot. Like, that three-hour span is quite a difference. And I thought about it immediately from the fan perspective of those who were traveling to, to come to the games from maybe long distances. The difficulty that's going to provide. And, you know, maybe they were like thinking about getting up early and driving down, but now they have to get up even earlier and drive down. And then I started thinking about, oh, man, what about the tailgating? The tailgating is going to be quick in the morning, and then the game's going to start before you know it. So it, just all these thoughts came into my mind, but I'm like, okay, well, hold on. Maybe there's some sort of reason as to why. Well, the tweet didn't say a reason, but the statement officially came out by the University of Arkansas, and they uh, sent it out via email to the media, and it said... With the weather forecast calling for temperature in the mid-90s and a high humidity on Saturday afternoon, a decision was made to shift the game time to allow safer conditions for the student-athletes on the field and fans in attendance. It's still going to remain on ESPN Plus and SEC Plus Network Plus for streaming, but it's going to be at noon instead. So, one of the things, too, that was an interesting part of it was that since the game's not on actual TV, uh, and Arkansas being that SEC team, they can kind of choose what time they want to play the game. As part of the S uh, SEC's new deal with ESPN, schools are allowed to dictate those times for those stream games, and there's no TV schedule to work around since there's none. So they could have done it at any point in time. They could have changed it to any time, and they decided no. Now, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, okay. It's a little warm outside, and it's going to be warm outside. And yeah, there is going to be a little bit of humidity. I get it, but timing of it all seems kind of strange. But 
just like everything, I started thinking about it more, started researching it more, and I'm like, you know, selfishly, I kind of love this. For me personal. Only because I'm going to be at the game no matter what. I got to go into the buzz tailgate no matter what. Like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be tailgating. I'm going to be hanging out. I'm going to see people. I'm going to go to the game. Like, all that's going to happen no matter what. But what this provides, at least, is that if the game starts at noon, and because of some of the new rules, and it's streaming, so there's not going to be as many hard commercial cuts, and you also have the running clock on first downs, there's a chance that this game could get over with, like, by three at the latest. And so when that happens, then all of a sudden, I have the entire afternoon on a Saturday. You can do whatever I want. I can go to some restaurant and watch the games. I can come home and watch the games. I can go hang out with some friends and watch the games. The big games are going on. So I'm like, okay, I actually like this. It ain't too bad. Especially if the weather is going to be a little bit cooler once the game gets going. Sounds pretty nice. Well, I liked it. It was surprising, but I liked it. But I also started to see on social media, especially the amount of fans that did not like this. Like at all whatsoever and I was like oh my gosh some people didn't mind so I'm not going to try to paint every Razorback fan of this way but there were some that were irate and ticked off because of various reasons whether or not they were traveling in like whatever but then it got taken up to an 11 when people started throwing around these conspiracy theories as to why the game was moved some people started saying this is why this is just another way of the U of A making it to where no one can go to the game. It's going to be a terrible attendance, and they're just going to try to get out of there. No one wants to go. Then some people started saying, oh, it's because Sam Pittman and the players, they just want to go home and spend their Saturday night in Fayetteville, and get and kids want to go to Dixon Street, and Sam Pittman just wants to sit at his pad drinking a beer and not caring. And I'm like, hold on. Hold the phone. Let's, let's relax here, okay? Sam Pittman made it made them everyone aware, I think it was last week at the Little Rock Touchdown Club, that he kind of preferred if this game was being played earlier. He had said that. And I'm sure when it came into this week and they saw the weather forecast and they saw that it was going to be miserable, and they saw it was going to be hot, they're like, hey, how, how about this? Listen, it's streaming already. We can move the time. Let's get with Western Carolina and make sure that they're good to go on the times and everything. And let's get out of there early. Let's, let's do a noon game. That way, it, it's, it's just a three-hour difference. We go down there. We're going to be down there the night before anyway, so let's just go down there, stay the night, wake up, play the game, get done, get out, come home, and we're home in enough time for dinner. And that way, kids can get their recovery at the facilities that Arkansas has up at the University of Arkansas. They, their, their sleep schedule's not off to where if they would have moved it to a night game, it would have been you know 2 to 3 a.m. before they get back because they are busing down there. Like there was just all these factors that could have played in to where it's like, okay, let's make it easier on our team and on our players and on our coaches to get everything that they need and just get back. And some people took that as a slap in the face. No, they don't care about the fans down here. They don't care. No, that's, folks, listen, Arkansas has got a lot of traveling going to be happening this year. And once the next two weeks, I guess two and a half weeks roughly, of games are over with, Arkansas is going to be away from the state of Arkansas in football games for like five straight weeks, okay? They're going to be traveling to all different places for like five straight weeks. If they can avoid traveling, or at least traveling as much late into the night where it takes a toll on them, takes a toll on their, like, to get right and get in a routine, if they can avoid doing that, then have at it, 100% do it. Do it in every way possible. So I get it, and I understand it. Now, I'm not to say that I don't have sympathy for any of the fans that may have made plans around this, and now they're having to change those plans, or now their plans got canceled. I feel for you. I really do. Like, I hate that, and I, it, it sucks because there's no right way of doing it. But on the other side of the coin, I also know that there are some people that I know personally that couldn't have gone to the game originally, but now that they can because it's being held earlier in the day. So it's, it's a catch-22 deal. But the point is, is that this isn't a conspiracy against any sort of thing with Little Rock or with the War Memorial or with fans or, or anything like that. You're still going to go to the game or you're still going to watch the game. You're still going to have a good time. And when it's all said and done, it's all going to be fine, especially if Arkansas wins and wins big. And especially if we get to have a chance to watch some of these other great games. Like all these things are going to happen and everyone's going to be happy. That's my prediction. at least. 
So I just wanted everyone to know that it's, there's no conspiracy. You're upset. You're frustrated. We all understand it, but I, I like the idea and I like how it's going to be done that way. And for those of you who are like, they're just trying to get the games out of Little Rock as, as much, quickly as possible. Folks, there's only two games left, I believe, this year, and then the Little Rock game in 2025 against Arkansas State, and that's it. So it's not like they can get out of it quicker, like suddenly by canceling that Arkansas State game. That's not going to happen. So just uh, just make sure that all of you are, are doing what you're supposed to be doing by getting to the game. Like That's the important thing. That's the important thing. Uh, but still, the thing is, is that we also, with maybe some of the, the problems that have been going on here, folks, uh, <laughs> like maybe you could use some better help. All right. Because that's what this show is sponsored by. They're sponsored by better help. You know, when we all get into certain parts of our life and we get stressed and we get overwhelmed and there's a lot of things that are happening in our life, sometimes we forget about the most important things. Sometimes we lose focus. We lose the, the thoughts of what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to be doing it and everything. And when we're faced with those tough choices, it's tough to decide which path to go down. But that's what BetterHelp can help you with and help us all with. Whether you're dealing with decisions in your career or your relationships or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected and where you really want to go and navigate your life. And you can really help you move forward with that confidence and that excitement that we all desire in each one of our lives. And I know that there's always these times where when we run into these problems, we can be extremely prideful and not want to have help, whether it's from people we know or from therapy itself. But I can tell you, folks, that someone who has had their own fair share of uh, you know, some, some mental issues that have gone through, and uh, especially when I was younger, um, you know, I battled through a, a little bit of a phase of depression as, as a kid, which was, was real. But you know, therapy can really make a difference. And make us into the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, if you need some help with that, give BetterHelp a try. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnCollege. You are Locked On Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, the depth chart was officially released, so that's fun. Aren't you guys just excited and get the breakdown of who the backup kicker is going to be? Sure you are. Um, but I, I laugh at this because game notes always get released. For those of you who may not know, uh, game notes are really helpful for someone like me and the radio and podcasting world to be able to read through it and learn more about the opponent, especially ones like Western Carolina, which by the way, uh, I don't know if I said this yesterday on the podcast, but, uh, later this week on the podcast, we're going to have the head coach of Western Carolina joining us, which I'm really excited about. And so we'll get a first taste of what they're all about, uh, there at Western Carolina. Uh, we'll give you more details on that as the week goes on. But still, the depth chart was officially released, and there were a few things that were pretty interesting from it, mainly the fact that K.J. Jefferson's the starter. I'm just kidding. But uh, it's, he's the starter. Jacoby Criswell's backup. Yeah, no surprise. Rocket Sanders is starter. A.J. Green's second string. And Rashad DeBainian and Dominic Johnson. Nothing surprising there. Now, the wide receivers, which are, of course, mainly the new players that have, you know, that have hopped in board, on board, um, one of the outside receivers are starting will be Andrew Armstrong and Isaac Tesla. Both of those guys, not surprising. Uh, I expect big things out of both of them, especially Isaac Tesla. I think he's going to be awesome. I think he's going to have a huge year this year. So I really look forward to him. But those are the two starters. Now, the inside receiver, the slot receiver, I always just assumed it was going to be Isaiah Centaine. And um, it's not to say that it won't be, but it was listed as an or with Jaden Wilson. Now, for those of you who may not know how the ORs work in the depth charts, it's basically where you have two players listed and either one of them could start. It could be Isaiah Satania or it could be Jaden Wilson, which Jaden Wilson, I'll admit, came out of nowhere for me. Like, I did not know that he was at the point to where he was at to be competing for a starting spot, especially in that slot position. Uh, but apparently he's done some really great things and really has had the attention of 
Sam Pittman and the coaching staff. So it looks like he could get that opportunity. But I still think Isaiah Centennial will start. But, but let's be honest about it. Whoever they roll out there on the first play of the game, especially the wide receiver position, does not mean that, okay, well, Isaiah Centennial started, so therefore he, that he's playing the whole game and Jane Wilson's not going to come in and get it. Like, you may not start, but you're going to play. So that was surprising. Now, here's the cool thing about what I saw from the depth chart. Luke Hobbs has, I guess it is, Luke has. I always forget how to pronounce it, but you know what I'm talking about. That dude's tight end one. Not tight end or another tight end. Tight end one. True freshman, 6'3", 242. Sam Pittman's been raving about this kid. We know he's highly recruited coming out of high school. And he's going to be the starter at tight end. That, to me, shows so much. Like, that is such a great thing to see that. Because it could be a deal. I'm not trying to make the comparison. But it could be a deal to where you see a level of, like, a Hunter Henry. Because coming out of high school, that's about where he was at recruiting rankings. So, huge upside for this kid. And the fact he's getting the start day one, where they brought in a lot of really good transfers at a tight end position, says a lot. After him, Francis Sherman, the transfer from Louisville, is going to be uh, second. But Nathan Bax and Varquise Gums are at that or position. So they'll move around a lot. But it's really cool to see that Luke has got that spot, and that's where it's at. Now, the offensive line, there's no surprise there. you got Brady Latham at the left guard. you got Bo Limmer at center. you got Joshua Braun at right guard, which good for him. I've really liked him and think he's great. So he, he's there at right guard. And what's, what's crazy about it, he's 6'6", 348. I know he's not the, it doesn't weigh the most on the team, but that's a huge dude. 6'6", 348. Patrick Kutas got 6'5", 313. He's at the right tackle position. He's starting. But where they have the or spot at is Andrew Chambly, the true freshman, or the redshirt freshman, and also Devin Manuel, who's been doing some really good things. So they're going to try to figure out, but injuries have played some of this into who the or is at. And uh, we know that in that case, there's probably been some injuries. Guys have been banged up a little bit, uh, like Devin Manuel, but. Uh, they should be good there. Defensive line, there's no real surprise to me. You got Landon Jackson, Torian Carter, Eric Gregory, and Trajan Jeffcoat. Those are your guys. Uh, but Christine, Chris Poo Paul and Jaheim Thomas as both being a starter or. I was a little surprised by that because I figured Chris Poo Paul's the dude. Like, shouldn't have to worry about anything because he's the guy that played quite a bit last year. But, you know, he's been dealing with some injuries being banged up. So, but they've really liked what they've seen from Jaheim Thomas who uh, physically is amazing. He's 6'4", 240. Like, that dude's huge. Um, but, yeah, Jordan Crook's the other uh, linebacker that's going to be playing. So no surprise there. Now, field safety is also an or position because you have Hudson Clark, the no-fly zone, also uh, sharing a spot with Jaden Johnson. So one of those two is going to be at the field safety position, which is great. You got uh, Al Walcott who's going to be the starting boundary safety is what they call it. And he's the transfer from Baylor. And then you have at the cornerback position, you got Snacks Johnson at one end. Awesome. And Dwight McLaughlin Nudie. No surprises there. And uh, the cornerback or the hog or, or no, sorry. Lorando Johnson's at the hog position. Snacks Johnson's at the hog. And then on the outside, you got Dwight McLaughlin and Jaheim Singletary. Jaheim Singletary being the former five-star transfer from Georgia. Yeah, Cam Whittle's a field goal guy. Cam Whittle is the kickoff man. Punter is Max Fletcher. Um, kick return is Isaiah Satania and A.J. Green. And also punt return is Isaiah Satania and then Bryce Steve. So there you have it. There's your, uh, your depth chart breakdown for what to expect on the first game down here in Little Rock. You guys enjoy that? Enjoy every bit of it? I know I did. Love breaking down the two deeps. Whew, doesn't matter so much. But we'll, we'll see. Hopefully it plays out and hopefully there's no shenanigans going on with these depth charts. Nick Saban didn't even root like reveal one. So forget that guy. Uh, but anyways, uh, folks get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus all customers who bet $5 with $100 one get, will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That's an incredible deal. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. And the app is very easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right, so a final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I will be doing my predictions more in depth as the uh, week goes on. In fact, on Friday, I plan on doing all of my predictions, final predictions, not only the game, but of the season. So that'll be the uh, basis of that. But uh, I did want to say, though, in general, because people have been asking me about simple things. So I'll kind of like give a little tease of a few predictions of uh, offense and defense and maybe some individuals, too, as we go along. and then. Again, on Friday will be our uh, full in-depth one of, of as far as predictions go. But one thing I'll say about the offense, I'll start with there. The offensive prediction that I feel like I'm at least most strongly about, that's, well, that'll be the one. The offensive prediction I feel most strongly about, to me, is the fact that you're going to have an offense that is not only very well balanced, but also is going to be extremely efficient in the red zone. Now, Arkansas's Biggest problem last year, without question, offensively, was punching it in on goal line situations, on third and short, fourth and short things. Like, that was a problem, without question. But I believe that this team is going to turn over a new leaf when it comes to getting points. I don't think we'll see them. I think they'll know more about time and placement of whether or not to go for it on fourth down when you're in field goal range. Because that also happened way too often last year, where they went for it, they didn't get it, didn't get any points. Cam Whittle is a good field goal kicker. Let him go out there and kick. You know, if, it, if certain situations call for it or if it's fourth and inches, okay. But if it's like fourth and three and you're at the 28-yard line, kick a field goal. Or even if you're upset because you, you didn't get the push that you wanted and you got stopped short and it's fourth and short from the 30, kick a field goal if the game calls for it. So I think that they're going to be smarter with that by getting points in the red zone. It may not always be a touchdown, although we'd all love that. I think a lot of it's going to be coming down to also just kicking field goals. Just do that. Make some points that way. Man, that'd make things so much easier, right? So I'll, I'm going to go with that, is that we're going to see the red zone offense increase, be a lot more productive, be a lot more efficient, and make better decisions when it comes to going forward on those fourth down calls. I don't want to see too many of those if it ends up being problematic. And no dumb trick plays, because that's another thing, too, about Dan Enos. I don't know if I brought this up. Like, Kendall Browles' trick plays almost never work. Like, the wide receiver passes, especially when Traylon Burks was there, they never work. But if you go back and watch what Dan Enos did when Arkansas was, had, his, had him as the offensive coordinator back in the Bielma days, almost every trick play always worked. Against TCU on a two-point conversion when they needed it, had to have it, they run a wide receiver reverse pass from Keon Hatcher to Austin out. Nailed it. Like, they did plays like that that were really fun. End arounds that were really fun. But they were effective and they were. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that too. But either way, we'll talk about that more as the week goes on. But appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Raise Your Backs podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.